this next metric we're going to talk about is return on invested capital or ROIC and one of the interesting things about this metric is that while it's a common financial measure it's only come into favor in the airline industry in the past few years and the reason is that prior to that the returns have been so poor that it sort of didn't make sense to even talk about it in the previous decade the priority for airlines has been on improving liquidity getting to positive free cash flow uh, reducing debt reducing costs it's only now that the airline industry is in a better financial position they they can focus on improving returns and they are talking about ROIC now and they're even setting uh, targets and goals around ROIC and this is making investors very happy because improving ROIC generally results in better stock prices and when ROIC gets to a certain level it's said that the company is creating shareholder value which is good for the uh, value of the stock so I think you'll you'll see a little bit more uh, what I mean by that when we go through an example and we're going to start with a very simple example just to illustrate what this metric is and then we'll we'll expand it to the airline industry uh, let me get a let me get a pen here so let's suppose that we have uh, some capital to invest in a small business so we have some capital capital um, and we're going to say we have one hundred thousand dollars of capital and we're going to invest that so that's our invested capital and after one year we generate from that capital a let's see twelve yeah twelve thousand dollar profit okay and I think you can see where this metric is going uh, the return on that capital is simply the profit that we made over the uh, capital that we invested so capital and we can do that simply is the twelve thousand dollar profit divided by the one hundred thousand dollar initial investment so we get a return of twelve percent now the the calculation does get a little bit more complicated for more complex businesses but the concept does not that's it so let's say this was an airline an airline goes out and raises some money so they raise capital to buy some assets they you you know so the assets are uh, airplanes and buildings and facilities and equipment they use that those assets to start an operation and that operation generates some profit to get the return on that capital you simply take the profit that uh, operation generated and divided by the money that took to uh, get that operation going so the 12 percent is a measure of how well the airline is using its capital how efficiently they're using this money to generate a profit now let's take this example one step forward and talk about where we got the money from so we said we started with a hundred thousand dollars but we didn't say where we got that capital and let's say we borrowed all of it so we raised one hundred thousand dollars of debt and that's where our capital came from well when we borrow money we need to pay interest on that money and we say that there's a cost of capital so uh, you know we didn't get this money for free we borrowed it we have to pay for that money so there's a cost of that capital and we're going to write that term here and in this case the cost of the capital is just the interest rate it can be other things but in our case it's just the interest rate and let's say the interest rate was uh, seven percent so we made twelve percent on our capital we had to pay seven percent for that capital so our return is greater than our cost of capital and if you look at the value of the company and we're not going to try to calculate the value of it but you can see you started with a hundred thousand dollars you made uh, twelve thousand dollars but you had to pay for the capital but at the end of the year you had more than what you started with 
and that's when we say we're creating value so we're creating value for our investors and that's that's good for the stock price well now let's take the opposite example let's say the cost of capital is uh, higher than the return and let's say the cost of capital is uh, 14%. So now, even though the airline is uh, generating a pretty good return, their cost of capital is so high that at the end of the year, they actually have less than what they started with because it's costing them so much money to service that debt that it's eating away at all of their, uh, uh, of their uh, profit. So if you, were going, if you were an investor and you looked at this situation, you'd say, well, that's not a good investor, uh, uh, not a good investment. They're actually destroying value. This is a good investment because they're creating value. Well, let's just take this one step further to uh, make it look more like an airline. So usually airlines get their capital from two places, debt and equity so uh, they sell shares in the company right so let's say in this case um, we'll just cross this out and say they got fifty per fifty thousand dollars from debt and fifty thousand dollars from equity and that's how they raise their capital and now we can expand this ROIC definition to look uh, more like an airline so ROIC is now uh, profit and we're we're going to use operating profit or op income over oops eh, close enough right profit over uh, capital which is the sum of debt plus equity okay debt plus equity and because there's two components to capital here there's a couple of different costs that have to be considered. So there's a cost on the debt, that's the interest rate, and there's a cost on the equity, and I'm not going to go through that, but there's there's some some cost associated with that equity. And that that combined cost, so there's you know there's some portion of the capital that's debt, there's some portion of it that's equity, there's different interest rates for different debt maturities, and the actual cost that's used is called the uh, the WAC, so we'll write it over here, the WAC, and that is the weighted average cost of capital. So it's just, it's the cost of capital, but it's the average of these different, uh, uh, the different costs for these, you know, different debt maturities and such, and it's a weighted average based on uh, how much debt versus how much equity and so forth. So, um, the the thing that we're going to compare ROIC to is this weighted average cost of capital. So we're going to take our ROIC over here. And if you were an investor, you would want to invest in a company that is returning, that their return is above their cost of capital, right? If a company is not earning their cost of capital, they're destroying value. And if an airline is in this case, they need to they need to change something so that this in inequality gets reversed. Well, what can they do? Well, they can improve their return, they can improve their profit, they can reduce debt, or they can lower their cost of capital by restructuring restructuring their debt and things like that. Now, in the next video, I'll show you some historical figures for the airline industry and some, some current metrics and talk a little bit about what airlines are doing to improve their ROIC um, or reduce their weighted average cost of capital. See you then.